Oh, so you actually want to win your election. Well, you want to know how? Yeah, let's talk about that. Instead of focusing on winning arguments, we're teaching the basic fundamentals of sales and marketing and how we can use them to win in the world of politics, teaching you how to meet people where they're at on the issues they care about. Welcome to The Brian Nichols Show. Well, hey there, folks. Brian Nichols here on The Brian Nichols Show, and thank you for joining us on, of course, another bone-filled episode. I am, as always, your humble host, joining you from our lovely Cardio Miracle Studios here in, yes, lovely Eastern Indiana. The Brian Nichols Show is powered by Amp America. Very excited to be part of the Amp America team. And if you want to go ahead and make sure you're getting news you trust, plus some awesome opinion articles, if I do say so myself, because I write a few of them, head over to ampamerica.com, hit subscribe, and uh, make sure you uh, check your inbox as well, because you can sign up for our e-newsletter uh, delivered straight to your inbox, I think weekly at this point. So go ahead and check out ampamerica.com. And again, The Brian Nichols Show, also powered by Cardio Miracle. Cardio Miracle is our studio sponsor, and I am very excited to be uh, not only uh, sponsored by Cardio Miracle, but I'm actually a user of Cardio Miracle. And uh, I got to tell you, folks, uh, if you've been listening to the show for a while, you've heard me say this. If you're new to the show, you're going to hear me say it for the first time. And that is the Cardio Miracle difference is 1000% real. And, and by the Cardio Miracle difference, what I'm talking about is an improved heart health. I'm talking better blood pressure. I'm talking better sleep at night. I'm talking better pump at the gym and more. And uh, I got to tell you, the better blood pressure part, that's been a huge win for me. I have a family history of high blood pressure. I thought I was doomed to have high blood uh, high blood pressure myself. And uh, I started taking Cardio Miracle at about seven months ago. Um, my blood pressure would still get high. And then uh, my doctor was like, mm, maybe you should talk some more about medicine more. And I was like, I don't want to do that. And uh, all of a sudden, so I have another checkup here on Friday. Excited to see where I'm at now uh, because last time I went to the doctor, I was a, a nice, I was like 121 over 80. So right where we're supposed to be. Uh, love it. And uh, for anyone who is looking to experience that cardio miracle difference, one of the key ingredients there, nitric oxide. And I got to tell you, uh, I, I think you are going to experience the cardio miracle difference for yourself. Tens of thousands of other folks have. So why don't you go ahead to briannicholshow.com forward slash heart or heck, just go to the show notes. If you're joining us here today, click the link. It'll bring you over to our friends at Cardio Miracle, where if you use code TBNS, you're going to get 15% off your order. And I guarantee your heart will thank you. But don't just take my word for it. You have a 100% money back guarantee. So you have nothing to lose except for that high blood pressure, those sleepless nights, and of course, that weak lift you have at the gym. So go ahead, uh, check out for the Cardio Miracle difference for yourself. Again, your heart will, in fact, Thank you. Uh, now, going forward to today's episode, it's you and me, and we're going to be talking about something I was actually just talking about over at the Libertarian Party of Indiana's state convention they had here this past weekend, um, where we talked about how to win your election. Now, the uh, the the talk, obviously, <laughs> for the LPIN was much more focused on how libertarians can win their election, and uh, if anyone who attended the actual uh, conference, uh, who attended my, my uh, seminars, uh, over that three hour period that will we'll tell you that, yes, uh, I maybe delivered some hard truths to some libertarians. And actually, I think it was pretty well received. And for the folks who did give me some pushback, I think they actually maybe left the uh, the conference having their minds changed a little bit. Believe it or not, we're able to do that here at the Brian Nichols Show. And we teach you how. And today we're going to teach you not just how to change people's minds, which mm, are we teaching you how to change people's minds or are we teaching you, in fact, how to win your election. And that is exactly, yes, where we're starting today. It's not just about changing people's minds. It's about going after people who are, in fact, ready to vote. Now, I talked about this theme um, at the Libertarian Party of Indiana, and that is when we're looking at the world of sales, we talk about our ICP, our ideal customer persona. And when we're looking in the world of politics, we got to look at our IVP, our ideal voter persona. Who is that ideal voter? And, and specifically, who are the folks who are motivated to go out and actually vote? So today we're going to go through and talk about how, yes, you can, in fact, go ahead and uh, become a, a better a better candidate if you're running campaigns, how to become a better campaign manager, and yes, how to actually win your election. So uh, number one, I just want to call out, there is a distinct, very distinct difference between presidential elections and state and local elections. 
and for that matter, federal elections, right? Um, when you're talking presidential elections, federal elections, you're talking national conversations, national topics of interest. Whereas when we're talking state and local, we're talking state and local issues. So you have an obligation as a candidate, as a salesperson, which if you are the candidate, that is your role. You are the salesperson for your yourself. And at this point, your your, your platform, your, your campaign is in fact uh, what you're representing here. Then it is your responsibility to play that role, to be that salesperson. So you have to make sure that you are meeting them where they're at on the issues they care about, which are state and local, not those massive presidential uh, topics of conversation. So uh, now going into what I talked about before, going towards your IVP, your ideal voter persona, let's talk the idea of convincing voters because you don't want to spend your time uh, going after uh, folks who need their minds changed. That Because that doesn't mean just going out and trying to win the argument. That means spending resources. And as a candidate, you also have to be very conscious of the, the funds that you have because the funds are, yes, either your own funds or the, the funds from your do, uh, your donors, your your folks who are going out and actually giving five, 10, $25 where they can. Um, and yes, some of those larger donors as well. So you have an obligation to make sure you're using those funds, those resources wisely. Um, so don't go out just trying to change people's minds Focus on voters who already uh, agree with where you're at. Meet them where they're at, right? And, and find those common uh, common areas and also find voters who plan to vote. The best way to find that is to find voters who already have voted or voters who are motivated to vote. So look for some type of trigger event that would motivate them to vote. So right now, right now, if you're talking the immigration uh, conversation, border state, huge issue, find folks who are motivated to, to talk about that. If you're talking inflation, another huge issue, find folks who are motivated to go out and vote for that, who are, yes, on our side. Don't go out and say, you know what? I'm going to go after a bunch of Democrats and get them to become free market uh, free market proponents and, and vote for a libertarian, a Republican, a conservative, free market constitutionalist. I'm going to do that. No, no, you're not. You're, and if, if you do have success, it's going to be with one or two people. Um, so don't waste your time. Go after the folks who are actually motivated to make a change and already agree with you. So that's number one. Um, also, make sure that you are their champion. Make sure that you're speaking about how you're going to go out and fight for them. Uh, that's why Trump won. <laughs> Let's be real, right? Trump won because he was speaking to the person who was saying, who's going to stand up and fight for me? And at that point, no one was, right? And, and Trump was actually looking around saying, there's a lot of folks out there who are saying, will somebody please just stand up and be my voice? I can do that. And he did that all the way to becoming president of the United States, which if you had asked me in 2015, I would have said was just a complete fantasy. Donald Trump as president? Come on. And here he sits. But I learned from that. I said, oh, there, there's a reason he won. It's because he said I was willing to fight for folks. So yes, be the champion for folks who don't feel they have a voice. Be their, 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 you know, their warrior. Be <laughs> their Donald Trump, just maybe a little less of the bluster. Um, also, it's easier to convince people of one thing versus two or three things. So instead of focusing on multiple issues and trying to get them to agree on all of those issues, <coughs> libertarians, <coughs> focus on one issue, one coalescing idea that you can bring them forward on and, and yes, make that their, their landmark issue. You think Trump's 2016 campaign, again, I'm just going to use Trump because he's a great example to learn from. What do you think of with Donald Trump? Build the wall. Right. And that was an easy thing for people to get on board with or to stand against. Now, Trump knew if we're going back to what we talked about earlier, he wasn't going to win those folks over who weren't on board with the wall. So he wasn't trying to. He was making a distinct line in the sand of who was on board with him and quite literally who wasn't. And with that, going after and being the champion, fighting for those folks who were on board with it. So yes, make sure that you're focusing on just one of issues versus two, three, or four. 
because then you start to get lost in the weeds and you can actually start to push people away versus bringing people together, which as a candidate, your role is not just not just to uh, to go out and be a messenger, but also, yes, to to win the election, meaning you have to bring more people uh, to your cause. Um, also, uh, make sure that the issues that motivate voters um, understand as a candidate, they're probably going to differ from what you yourself care about. And we talk about this a lot when we're talking to uh, specifically small L libertarians in the, the audience. How do we sell our ideas? You, you, you can't make people care about the issues you care about. You have to meet them where they're at. Say it with me on the issues they care about, because it doesn't matter what you care about. They want to know what's in it for them. Do you care about me as a person? Do you care not just about me, but do you have out uh, a solution that I value from an outcome standpoint? It's going to make my life tangibly better. We have to be able to address all those questions that our perspective buyer, in this case, our perspective voter, rightfully has. All right, now let's go towards uh, how do you defeat an incumbent? Because unless you are lucky, like some of our candidates we've had here on the, the Brian Nichols show when we've done our interviews who are running unopposed, a lot of you are going to be facing someone in a general election. And more often than not, you're going to be facing an incumbent. So how do you go after an incumbent? So, so first of all, we have to make incumbents seem unpalatable to voters. You, you have to highlight those failings. You have to highlight the broken promises. You have to highlight all the negatives. But, but, and as I talked about the LP of IN, you also have to lead with positive. You have to paint a positive fi uh, picture. You have to not just attack and point out the negatives, but you have, you better darn make sure you have a better solution that you can bring to the table that is for something, not just against something, not just negative. Because what happens when it's just negative, you start to have the ideas of, oh, well, this isn't about me anymore. It's about you, the candidate. You have an you have an agenda. You have this this uh, you know this idea, much much like we've seen in the world of politics, where politics doesn't really talk about the voters anymore. It turns into a political game of of going after one another. We as candidates will have more success in winning our elections if we run not as what's in it for me, but what's in it for you, the voter. So. That focus on that. Also, um, remember, just in in the uh, the general scheme of things, you have a, an uphill um, battle that you're fighting. So you're you're having to make some name recognition uh, name recognition out there because the incumbent by default is going to have more name recognition. They they've been the candidate and now they are the elected official. So you better make sure that you are out every single day, foot on pavement, knocking on doors, saying hello to as many folks as you can, kissing as many babies as you can. Is that allowed in a post-COVID world? I don't know, but being out, being visible. And by the way, I mentioned door knocking. We're going to touch on that in a little bit. Um, now, let's go ahead and talk about um, talking about funding disadvantages. Um, you are going to, as a, a uh, more often than not, a startup candidate, especially if you are going against an incumbent, you are going to face some financial challenges, especially when you're looking at the, the dollars and cents versus your opponents. So how, how do you address this. Well, as I mentioned before, um, it's going to take a lot of hard, uh, hard work <laughs> for you as a candidate. So starting out, you are going to have to do some stuff you're probably uncomfortable with. I'm actually mentoring a few candidates right now on this very issue. And first and foremost, you need to start doing some fundraising. Um, you need to start doing some, some calls as my old sales manager used to say, smile and dial, uh, get ready. Cause you need to start doing some outreach and getting some dollars in because it's not just going to show up. Just because you have a great message or a great idea doesn't mean your people are just going to start show up and say, "Yes, I'm going to hand you my money," like the uh, the Futurama meme. No, you you were in many cases going to have to ask for that money. So get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, do those phone calls. So that's number one. Uh, number two, spend some time doing uh, targeted outreach, specifically text messaging campaigns, which do work, and I'll talk about that in a second. But also door knocks. Now, door knocking is by far one of the best tools, the best means to actually having success. You look at our friends over at Young American for Liberty, they're doing operation win at the door because they win at the door. When they knock on 80,000 plus doors, the candidates, they go out and knock on those doors for time and again, win, win, win. And it's because when you go out and you knock on doors, you can quite literally meet your voters where they're at, at home. And, and that speaks volumes because guess what? That's hard. 
So if if you're going out and doing it by you just going out and and having the the wherewithal to put yourself through the the thousands of doors that you will inevitably knock on. I mean, I've seen candidates they've literally walked the soles off of their shoes. I I know there are other candidates who they'll never do that. They, they, some of them physically can't do that. So with that, you going out and doing this will instantly differentiate you from the competition. And in this case, many of you, the, the incumbent, because they're probably not going to do it either. Um, now, uh, I also mentioned text messages. Our friend Morgan Bonwell, right? Strategy. She's a perfect example here of using text messaging to reach your voter. Um, now, not the spammy text, not the, you know, Donald Trump is really mad at you. Why haven't you responded, patriot? Send your $14.99 to TrumpLovesAmerica.com. None of that. Please don't do that. I know like that probably gets... 80% of the boomers to respond. Don't do that because it, it, it it's so spammy and it's going to really put you in a negative light to those potential voters who are maybe, you know, they're on board with you as a, a you know candidate, but maybe there's a primary you have to face. You know, don't give them a reason not to vote for you by being spammy, but you can use texting to meet them to, to get some fundraising dollars. So really use that to your advantage. Now use that, but also keep in mind that, um, you can go out and still do some of the other traditional means. You can use, uh, you know, yard signs. You can use billboards, but know that funds aren't aren't going to just you know flow into your your uh, your campaign bank account. So unless you are self funding and you you are doing pretty good, and if that's the case, good for you. Thanks for jumping in doing what you're doing. But if if that's not the case, uh, which for I know a lot of us out there, that's not the case. Please keep in mind that the best way to to have success is to, in fact, go out and knock on doors. Um, so really quick, uh, I really want to, again, thank uh, the Libertarian Party of Indiana for letting me speak at their convention. Um, I thought it was really necessary in many cases for some libertarians to hear the hard truth. Uh, that you can't just go out and say, well, liberty sells, uh, so we're going to win, right? No, you, you have to actually be prepared for potential objections. You have to know about how to message and frame your your positioning of your 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 solution to an audience that's not overtly libertarian or or overtly agrees with you. Um, yes, how to find those ideal voters? Uh, we we had a really good time, so I just want to take a pause there and do thank the uh, the Libertarian Party of Indiana for giving me that chance. Uh, so yes, uh, we'll continue here. I'm going to wrap up with another like two. I think we have left. Yeah, um, and then uh, going forward, uh, we talked about some un uncomfortable tasks. I talked about the fundraising calls. You, you got to do them. I had a candidate once I worked on literally my job uh, was going to have to be to handhold him to do to do dials. And that's what I ended up doing. Um, not going to say the candidate's name because it was a pretty big uh, campaign I worked on. And uh, the candidate was just like, no, I want to do dials. It's like, well, do you want to spend five million dollars this this uh, election? And he's like, no. We're like, okay, so you got, we got to do some dials. And we did some dials and we we got some money in the door. And guess what? He didn't spend $5 million. He got donors to help. Uh, so unless you want to be the candidate spending $5 million, if you're running for Congress, um, don't, don't do that. Uh, so also understand that if you are self-funding your campaign, um, just, just be prepared. Like it's, it's going to be a lot of money if you are going to try to self-fund your campaign. So a uh, I, I know a lot of folks were like, well, I'll do that versus do the dials. Um, no, don't do that because you're going to put yourself in a financial hole. And if you're only self-funding, you're just chances are you're not going to have enough funds to, to actually make a difference. So just bite the bullet, do the dials, do the tough stuff. That's uh, uncomfortable, but necessary for the success. Um, also you should believe in a cause um, that's going to push you through this, this discomfort. Um, like don't just do this. If you think it's going to help like get you name recognition or get you like, uh, you know, prestige or clout, like it's going to suck. <laughs> I mean, seven days a week, my dad ran for office for 15 years. Like, and he, and he was in office for, for 15 years. I saw it. Like he won his elections because he was out knocking on doors. He was out meeting with people face to face, going to community events. And that took a lot of time. Like I, I didn't see my dad a lot on the weekends because he was out being like, not just your know, dad, but also then being candidate and elected official. And that takes time. That takes energy. That takes effort. That takes time away from family. So don't think you're just going out and this is going to be a walk in the park. I worked on a, on a congressional campaign and I'm not even kidding. 20 hour days, seven days a week, 
no days off. I mean, if you're lucky, I literally, I, the candidate got married in the middle of an election and I had one day, one day of the entire election that was actually a day off. Otherwise, seven days a week, not knowing where you're sleeping that night because the district where I was working was so big that you had to go all over the place. So understand, again, this is not a walk in the park. This is not a shoe in. This is not easy is a, especially if you want to win, right? Which as a candidate should be your goal. You should want to win. So don't just do this to, to feel that you're just doing this to have fun. And it's going to be a grand old, grand old time. That's not the case. If you really want to make a difference and win your election, it's going to take hard work. All right. Uh, we're going to wrap up here um, with fundraising. So I, I told you, I got a few more things. I'm wrapping up. We're getting close. Uh, focus on raising and spending enough to be competitive that doesn't mean you need to exceed your opponent's budget. Um, like I, I can't tell you how many folks they just they would look at what their their opponent was fundraising and they'd just be like, "Why am I even doing this? Like, why am I fundraising if I'm just going to be outspent by three million dollars?" But it's not it's not a matter of how much you have to overspend them by. Just be competitive, right? So just keep that in mind. Don't feel you have to to reach that threshold. Um, also. Uh, Please make sure that um, when when you go out and you're prioritizing events to spend money on, um, make sure there are events that actually move the needle. Uh, and I mean, like if you can do some fundraising events, that's a priority. But also make sure that when you're going out and doing community events, that they're big community events uh, and, and make sure that you can be visible at those events. So just don't go out and go to any any, you know, like pony pony show pony show. I don't know. Sure. A pony show in a backyard. Is a pony show a thing? I'm getting head shaking. No, I guess a pony show is not a thing. Um, I don't know where that came from the recesses of my mind uh, because a very dark place apparently. Um, but no, po no pony shows, uh, but no, no little, you know, church basements where four people show up because you need to also remember that you need to use your time effectively. But also <laughs> with that being said, if you are local and you're running for city council, maybe that church basement with four people is exactly where you need to be. So really understand that it's going to be contextual um, of how you use your time and energy, but really make sure you're using your time and energy in the most effective and efficient way possible. Um, all right. So we got, that's all I had for you. Um, that's how you're going to win your election. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too scary and hopefully I didn't scare any of you off. And I did, if I did scare some of you off, maybe you shouldn't have been a candidate. Just saying, um, just saying. Also, it's really, I, I'm tired of the weather. Uh, this is global warming. I am getting a little annoyed because as you can tell, my allergies are killing me. Um, it's like 75 degrees today. And guess what's going to be this weekend? 30, which is why my throat's sore. So I'm getting tired of this. Can we just pick a temperature? Um, maybe I need to call back Dr. Moore and ask him what we can do to fix this. Uh, because I know we've gone through some scare stories. Maybe he's got some fixed stories. I hope he has some fixed stories. Um, that's all I have for you today. I'm just rambling at this point. Thanks for joining us, folks. Uh, with that being said, follow me on social media, on Twitter, x.com. Uh, also on Facebook, at B. Nichols Liberty, by the way, we're uploading our videos here on the Brian Nichols show to x.com and to Facebook in their entirety. So if you don't stream on YouTube, uh, you know, or grandma doesn't streams on the YouTubes, which do grandmas stream on YouTube? I know my grandmas both use Facebook. Uh, so I'm sure your grandmas use Facebook. Help them see the Brian Nichols show. Share the show over on our Facebook page. The Brian Nichols show is uh, over on Facebook as well. By the way, we have uh, 46,000 followers over there. Uh, help me hit 50. I want to hit 50 by the middle of the year. So you can help us do that. I know we have uh, a thousand, like literally tens of thousands of new folks here in the audience as uh, we've gone into the new year. So, and that's also with our brand new partnership at Amp America. Two thumbs up to Amp America, by the way. Uh, really excited to be part of the team. Um, but yeah, please help us hit 50,000 over on Facebook. We're doing lots of reels over there. Uh, we're doing lots of funny memes. Um, plus we have some really cool links to some awesome swag. Uh, like uh, our good ideas don't require force snapback. We have t-shirts. Uh, we have bumper stickers. We have coffee cups, all that and more. Plus you can uh, go ahead, find links to all of our sponsors over there as well, which I'm going to touch on our sponsors in a second. Um, by the way, did you check out our episode with John Bush? Last week, that episode was so fun. Um, John basically is doing exactly what we talk about here. When we're bringing folks on talking about the solutions they're doing, John is building literally an ecosystem of folks who are doing just that um, on a lot of other different areas called the, the Freedom Cell Network. And I'm just, I'm blown away that we haven't had John on the show until just this past week. So uh, please go ahead, check out that episode because it was a blast. Um, so that's number one. 
Number two, um, going into, yeah, where can you find the show? I, Brian, I listen to the show on a podcast. You say there's a video version of the show. Why, that's true. Yes, there is a video version of this show, Mr. or Mrs. Listener, and that is over on YouTube, on uh, Rumble, on Sovereign, and as I mentioned, uh, Twitter, uh, x.com, as well as on Facebook. You can find The Brian Nichols Show in its video entirety on all of those platforms. If you are joining us on YouTube or Rumble, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, Number one, number two, please hit the like button. That actually helps us a lot reach of uh, help us a lot reach new. Don't worry, I didn't have a stroke there. Just a little Freudian slip, Freudian slip or tongue twister. I don't know. Uh, let me start that over. Um, if you hit the like button, it will help us reach a lot more people than you think uh, because that's how the algorithms work apparently over on the YouTubes and uh, I guess Rumble as well. And we've been having some new audience over on Rumble. So really excited to see you guys join as well. Um, also hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single time we drop a new episode of The Brian Nichols Show. And then do me a favor, head below into the comments. Let me know your thoughts. If you are a candidate, do I sound like I'm hitting the mark here? Or did you work on a campaign? Did my campaign story sound similar to what you experienced? If so, I would love to hear your war stories. Because, man, the whole, you, you are on a political campaign and, and we just we, we empathize with each other. Because it's only a pain that someone who is on a political campaign, especially for like Congress, Senate, that kind of stuff, just a whole different level. So I'd love to hear your war stories. Head below into the comments or email me, brian at briannicholsshow.com. But Hark, you're watching us on the videos and you didn't know that we're a podcast? Yes, this is also in its podcast form. So maybe you're one of those folks who likes to work out and listen to podcasts. Hey, then go ahead, listen to the podcast version of the show, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Music, wherever it is you consume your podcast content, you can consume The Brian Nichols Show. Just do me a favor again, hit that subscribe button, hit download all unplayed episodes. That's a favor to me because it helps with downloads, but it's also a favor to you because guess what? There are 815 plus episodes here of the Brian Nichols show going all the way back to 2018. So you want to hear the, uh, the metamorphosis good word, right? Of this show uh, going all the way back six years or so. Well, go ahead into the archives again, download all un unplayed episodes, start at episode one, skip ahead to like episode 200, go back to episode 112, then skip ahead to like episode 613, all the way up to 816. I think we are today. Um, I guarantee that you're going to find a handful, dozens of, if not hundreds of episodes that will leave you uh, over my shoulder, educate, educated, enlightened, and informed. Uh, and with that being said, one final ask, and uh, I say this at the end of every episode because it, it, it's true. Please support the folks who support us, and that is our amazing, phenomenal, just absolutely wonderful sponsors here at The Brian Nichols Show, and they are Cardio Miracle, Ebel's CBD, Liquid uh, Liquid Freedom Energy Tea, Blood of Tyrants Wine, BNC Technology Advisors, and our uh, partners over at Proud Libertarian who uh, sponsor our shop. Again, our awesome good ideas don't require force snapback, plus a lot of other goodies over there. And also we have a new sponsor, the Indie Emporium. Uh, really excited to have them on as well. They, they have some different types of swag, uh, non-political swag. So go ahead and check them out as well. Use code TBNS. You're going to get some type of discount, whether it's 10%. 15% off, $5 off here, wherever it is. Um, just use that code and get your discount applied. In some places, they even give you free shipping, so that's pretty darn cool. Um, other than that, guys, um, yeah, they, they um, well, let me finish with this. Why is it important to support the sponsors? Uh, because they're the ones who keep the lights on here. Uh, we, we don't, we, we, we do, we did this at one point uh, for a number of years, and uh, I definitely made my wife mad a few times because of it. We did it when it was costing us some money. Um, and we did it because we love it. We love this show. We love you guys. You guys in the audience are incredible. Um, like just to meet you in person is always so cool because I hear you. Like I've been listening to you for years and it's just like, that, that's wild to me to think that you're there listening to my show and, and to know that you're getting value and you're seeing the solutions, you're seeing the outcomes and you're seeing how not only can we help real people right now, but it doesn't take the government to give us permission. As we talked about last episode on John uh, John's episode, you don't need the government to tell you you can do this. You can do it right now. We can start solving these problems right now. And I love that you love this. And I love that you enjoy listening three episodes a week. God bless us that we continue to have folks on who will help us, you know, educate, enlighten, and inform. And, and with that, you know, um, 
the sponsors have, as they started to join the show, it, it's made it easier. It's made us not only you know, financially uh, be able to, to do more, uh, we can reach more people now. Like I'm able to do more as we get more funding, we get more, more folks coming to the show. So if you've been listening to the show and you've gotten value from the show, please, I'm asking you, uh, you know, as, as the host now going into sales guy, like, please go to the, these sponsors, show them some love. Say like, I've listened to you on the Brian Nichols show. I've heard your, your name dropped. I wanted to check out the products and heck, I'm going to go ahead and buy some products now. Please, please be that person. Um, it means a world to me. It means a world. It means the world to me, this world, uh, specifically, I feel like that more <laughs> Zuckerberg meme where he's like, um, I'm a human. I was a human. I am, I am, I am human. Uh, no, I am, I am human, but seriously, folks, I really appreciate all the folks who go out. I mean, supporting our, our studio sponsor, cardio miracle, like you guys have. I, I mean, that, that also speaks to how much you guys have seen it. We, I see the numbers. There's hundreds of you guys out there who are like cardio miracle from Brian Nichols show two thumbs up. I love that. I love that. So more of that. Um, I know I'm rambling at this point. Know that I really appreciate everything that you guys do and sharing our content and helping supporting the show. So, uh, and, and one special shout out Chris and the, uh, the, the, the team here. Um, Chris is an amazing, amazing human being. Uh, not Chris Spangle, <laughs> Chris Spangle, that guy, Chris Spangle's got a special place in my heart. Um, I'm not going to tell you which ventricle, but he's somewhere in there. But uh, Chris Spangle is a great human being, but this is a different Chris and he works for my, my show and he has gone above and beyond for years, helping us grow the, sh grow, grow the show, reach new audiences. And he did it for a while um, where I couldn't, I couldn't help compensate him. And now I can, right? Again, because of you guys in the audience, I can help do things like this now. So I just want to also give a special shout out to him because he, he spent years helping me grow the show and he didn't have to do that, but he did it because he saw the value of what we were doing. And I got to just say, you know, Chris, you didn't have to do that. Thank you. And I really appreciate it. So um, guys, that's all I have for you today. Uh, hopefully you learned how to win your election. If you are a candidate, um, if you're sticking with me to the very end of the show, God bless you. Like you're, you're an OG. Um, but uh, with that, I, I really do hope that this is going to help you as you're going out and winning, um, you're winning your, your race. And by the way, if you are running local, we have a, an ebook for you. It's how to win your local election. You can find that over at brianicholshow.com. I will include that specific link for the book in the show notes, in the video description. And also you can find it over at brianicholshow.com. Ebook is free. So go ahead and uh, check that out. It's your how-to guide to literally win your local election. That's all I have for you. Brian Nichols signing off here on the Brian Nichols Show so you can learn how to win your local election and heck, just win your election in general. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to The Brian Nichols Show. Find more episodes at briannicholsshow.com.